thank you, Lisa. It's so fun to be here. And anybody that's hanging out with Lisa, I know they really have a good sense of what it means to be, to, to cultivate chi and aliveness in your life and in your being, because Lisa is really such an amazing example. Thank you. So, yeah. So my background, um, I got involved in the natural health and healing industry in 1989. So I was 29 years old. I'm 59 right now. And I got a job out in Colorado. I was working in New York City in marketing in New York City at Time Inc. actually. And I got a job offer um, in Colorado for a natural health and healing magazine. And it completely changed my life. It was um, so incredible to hang out with all these people who taught me so much about natural health and healing. And eventually I became president of that publishing company. And I went on to start a dot com about natural health and healing with a whole group of people. And, and then Danny and I started she running and she walking and she living in 1999, January of 1999. So by that point, I really wanted to have my own business and this whole concept came up and we had been working on it for a long time and we made it official in January of 99 to do chi running and chi walking and devote our lives to this. And it's been, so now this January will be 21 years, which I just can't believe. Um, so we wrote all the books together, chi running, chi walking, chi marathon, and have, you know, just built this business around this concept of Chi, and which comes from our study of Tai Chi. And uh, so Tai Chi is one of the most ancient of the martial arts. It's the originator. And it comes from the study of nature. And of course, I just fell in love with that because from my natural health background, you know, I'm a real sort of back to nature kind of girl. And I really believe in doing things for our body that are as natural as possible because I feel like that's really what cultivates true energy inside of us. So it's interesting, you know, when Lisa and I were talking about this, we did a little survey of our audience. And um, when it came to Chi living, aging gracefully was the number one thing people were interested in. I love doing these little surveys. It's really fun to see what people are, what's up with people, you know, and what, what they want to know about. So it's something, you know, I'm 59, so I'm, I, feel, I feel like I'm still in my young years. It's so funny, you know, it's such a state of mind, really, right? Your age, it's really so much a state of mind. And, um, but I still find it a fascinating study. Like, what is it about? What does it mean to age gracefully? So I've noticed that in the movies, one of my fun things that I like to look at is when they take a young actor or actress and they age them up, right? So they do that a lot in the movies. They'll take somebody and then they wanna put them ahead 20, 30, 40 years or whatever, the end of their life. And so I've always sort of noticed, what do they do to age people up? And so they do typical stuff. They gray their hair, so I have my, you know, my, gray, I call it my age flag. I let my age flag fly. And, um, but they gray their hair and they add some wrinkles. But the number one thing they do is they have them stiffen up. So if you notice, if you watch in the movies, if you see people and they, they're aging them up, they have their movements and some Meryl Streep, of course, she's the best at everything. But, um, she is so good at doing this. I saw her in a film. Um, she was playing Margaret Thatcher. And my God, the way she moved was just like my mother. When, I mean, it was eerie how good she was at moving like an older person. And so movement obviously has a lot, a lot, a lot to do with the aging process. So this ability to keep our body moving. But to me, having come from the natural health and industry, 
you know, we were into organics and we were into vitamins and supplements and herbal ways of healing yourself and calming your nervous system. And I love all of that. I really love it. But in my years of studying all of this, I really got into more and more subtle energies that, um, that kept energy flowing, more subtle things. And really, I've come to really believe and experience that it's the energy underneath everything that really is the source of what's going on physically. So if you're, if you're feeling a stiffening up in certain areas, it's probably not purely physical. Now, of course, there can be physical reasons for getting stiff and limited range of motion. That, that can happen. But really, I think a lot of it is an energetic an energetic process. And that energetic process comes from how we think and what we're feeling and how we're approaching life. So, so the, the number one thing about all of this is that, frankly, you know, there probably isn't much that I could say that you can't learn from your own body, your own experience. And so body sensing to me, and Lisa, you, I'm sure you talk about body sensing quite a bit because when you're doing chi running or chi walking or any process yoga, you know, you're really focusing on listening to your body. <laughs> and I would say listening to your body is the number one way to, well, do many things, but the most important one and probably the most important thing we can do is to love ourselves, you know, really care for ourselves, really be kind to ourselves, really. And the best way to do that is to listen to yourself. And so most of us or many of us are going through life and we're listening externally. We're following these external pressures, this external ought to, shoulds, have tos, or ideas of what, you know, how the media has sort of tortured women <laughs> about how we're supposed to be or what we're supposed to be, you know, doing on a lot of levels. And, but when you actually turn in and listen to your own body, so much will come through. And, and the body, when it is listened to, it moves. So, you know, in Tai Chi and in in moving chi, the, the line is, is that the energy flow, wherever your brain goes, the energy flows. Wherever your mind goes, the energy flows. So, it's, so the idea is, in terms of aging gracefully, is you want to keep your energy flowing. You want to keep energy moving. You want to keep alive and open to what's happening in your life. So this aliveness, like cultivating chi, is, is to me the number one thing people can do to keep themselves from feeling that stuck, shut down, closed down energy that is aging. And the way to cultivate chi, again, is to be listening to your own self. It's really getting in tune with these subtle energies in your life and paying attention to what your body likes and what it doesn't like, what opens up your body, what energizes it, and what makes it sort of shut down or close down or stiffen. So there's this whole stiffening process, right? And as we get older and, you know, life, life comes at us, right? Like we all have lived life pretty fully and all kinds of things happen um, that can begin to sort of shut down our energy or sort of encase us in a place where we're not moving as naturally and as freely and as openly as we'd like, keeping that energy flowing. You know, I'm, with my background in studying 
Tai Chi, I, and my husband's half Chinese, but I don't, I think more my interest in Chinese health and medicine came first, and then I ended up with this guy who's half Chinese. Um, but I use, I used, uh, um, I go and get acupuncture quite a bit. I mean, and their whole process in acupuncture is just opening up meridians and keeping chi flowing. So there's so many ways to keep chi flowing in your life and keeping the energy flowing in your life. And so, you know, some of the basics that we all know about starting out is eating well. You know, we have to feed our body healthy foods. And in terms of eating well, I'm not going to go into what that is about because it's just so different for everybody. But I would say, you know, the, the more recent studies and everything, this whole thing about gut health coming out is absolutely essential. It really is essential to keeping your energy flowing is having a really good digestive process. And so I think gut health, there's so much going on with gut health today. But what I find fascinating about it is that this whole thing about your brain in your belly, well, in Tai Chi and in our practice and what we feel is that that, is, that brain in your gut is very related to this Dantian or this center that we're moving from and Chi running and Chi walking. And so that place in Chinese medicine, but also if you just get to practice with it and be with it, it is a place of your creativity. It's the place of your intuition. And so it's a really good place to dive into and feel into your gut whenever you want to know if something is helping your chi flow or whether it's helping or whether it's closing you down or creating a little bit of stagnation in your body. Your gut knows. And so rather than doing a lot with our thinking brain, oh, what should I do? What should I eat? How, you know, how, how do I move through my day? The idea is to really go down into your body and into your gut and into this place that is just this wealth of, well, it's a wealth of energy. So it is the one place in your body where you're allowed, according to the Chinese, not to keep energy stored. Otherwise, energy should be flowing. You know how sometimes a lot of people get stiff necks and stiff shoulders or headaches or whatever, and it's because we're so head and brain oriented. It's almost like we're walking around with just, you know, like our whole body is meant to just carry these heads. And really, the truth is, is that there's, um, that the mind can be deceiving, but your gut is very honest. It's very truthful. Your body is very in the present. And so, you know, there's all this concept about how to get present. And the best way to become present in the moment is to be in dropping into your body, dropping into your Dantian. And you can try it right now. You can just drop in, just like feel that area, the Dantian, and you can feel it supported by whatever you're sitting on. So another good way to do this is to cultivate your senses, cultivate your senses and your five senses, but one sense is just feeling this proprioception, feeling where your body is in space. And so you take a moment and you just sort of breathe and then you drop your mind just into your belly and it seems so quiet. And it is quiet. But when you listen to it long enough, it begins to speak volumes. It's where energetically you can feel what is best for you and what isn't best for you. What is the best thing to eat? I mean, in the mornings, the first, when I am ready to eat, 
I do a lot of um, liquids in the mornings, like tons and tons of liquids in the mornings. And then finally, I'm ready to eat a little bit later in the day, uh, noon or whatever. It's different on different days. But when I am ready to eat, I drop down into my system and say, oh, what is it? You know, is it yogurt today? Is it a salad? Is it soup? What is it? And you really get a whole sense in your body. And that, when you're getting that sense of your body, you're getting this messaging coming up and informing you about what is most vital for you in that moment. So a lot about aging gracefully is about keeping vital, keeping really vital and alive to life. And, you know, we are... We are part of nature, is the sense and what you get when you're studying Tai Chi and, um, and Taoism. It came out of this, this, it's not really a spirit, it's not a religion by any means, it's sort of a philosophy. And that philosophy that Tai Chi stemmed out of was that we are part of nature and in harmony with nature. And so, so that's another whole message about that I've loved and followed my whole life is, is just keeping as close to the way nature wants things to be as humanly possible. So nature teaches us a lot about how we can, how we can age gracefully. Um, so, so aging gracefully is so much a state of mind you're listening to your body but the state of mind is so important because the mind affects the body so much so i'm going to go back to this stiffness a little bit that they have people do in the movies and which good actors do really well they stiffen up really well I've always wanted to see them do, you know, like get a little more subtle with it and do somebody who's actually very vital and alive, but older and how they would have them, you know, age up because they use this stiffening process so much. So obviously to not allow this stiffening process to happen, physical movement is so crucial. But What's important when you're doing physical movement is to have your mind involved with your body. So if your mind is wandering all over the place and listening to music and thinking about, you know, the friends you're having over and what you're going to have for dinner and everything else, then, then it's not paying attention to what's happening in the body. And when that, when that attention is elsewhere, the body is sort of left to its own resources. Um, but when the mind is focused on the body, so much happens. There's um, an alivening of the body just by us paying attention to it. So just by listening to your body, I think it is the most potent way to love oneself. Like there's all this thing about, right, so... So, you know, ultimately, I would say to age gracefully, you have to love yourself more and more and more. At a time when some people might think it's more challenging because you're getting older and there things aren't going as well and, you know, look like you did when you were young. And, you know, there's all this, especially in the, in the West, especially in the United States, there's such a negativity around aging and really... To me, it is a, such a blessing and such a grace, and there's so much beauty, so much beauty and potential for, um, for appreciating ourselves really deeply. So self-love is a difficult thing. I, I, don't, I don't think it's easy for anybody. But um, because, again, of this cultural input we have all the time, but such a beautiful way to go about like a simple practice for loving yourself is to listen to your body, your emotions, and to be fully respectful, compassionate, and loving towards whatever is there. 
like whatever shows up, we show it love and compassion. And that keeps the energy flowing. So as soon as you're listening to something and giving it positive, healthy attention, it, it opens like a flower in the sun. Your awareness is very much like the light of the sun to your body. And when that awareness is given to the body, when it's really paid attention to and listened to, it just has this, it opens like a flower. You can experiment with it and you can just feel, it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of practice, but it's such a potent meditation just for a few minutes here or there, just paying attention to your body, maybe finding a place that's a little stiff or sore, and then just rather than trying to make it be different, the idea is to accept it just the way it is and be present with it just the way it is. And when you do that, I don't know what it is, it's a mystery, but when you do it, you get the experience of this energy opening, this flowering happening, this, this opening to the sun is really the best description I can think of. And then the energy starts flowing. Then that part that was closed and stiffened and shut down perhaps, it, can, it begins to flower and then that energy is unlocked. And so the idea is to keep energy unlocked in your body. It's the idea is to keep it flowing and open and curious. And I, I would say another aspect of this is, again, in our Western culture, in the US, there's just this great respect for knowing everything like you're supposed to know this and you're supposed to know things and when you go into your body you're often opening to a, the mystery of i don't really know but that can lead you to hopefully it can lead you to oh but i want to explore i want to discover i want to um experience and see what happens and that all is keeping this energy flowing it's keeping it from sort of locking down and being forced into a box so what we want to do is sort of break down the walls of what's keeping us stuck in and this body sensing is such a loving and um, profound experience. So the way to do it literally, literally is to after anything or, you know, like a couple times a day, you literally just take a couple minutes and the more you can do the better. I mean, I try to do a meditation practice every morning, just a little bit. And in that meditation practice, I focus on my body. I focus on listening to my body. So you can do it for just a few minutes. You know, the whole practice of chi running and chi walking really is about this. It's really about learning to listen to your body, but you can do it any time. You can, you can just go down and really feel what it's like to be your legs. <laughs> Even sitting here right now, you can just drop in and feel the, feel your legs, feel where they're sitting, feel how they're, going down and feeling the bottoms of your feet. And when you are paying attention to your body and listening to your body, all this stuck energy in the brain begins to flow down into your body. It just naturally happens after just a few minutes, can release all kinds of tension that can be up here. So, so this whole thing about, about um, loving ourselves it's such a huge thing to do right it's just an enormous thing to do to really really love ourselves and there's there's a few other practices that are to me are really important and i think they again keep energy flowing so there's the practice of gratitude so i do have 
I do a gratitude journal. I mean, not every single day, but almost every single day. So it's one of the first things I do in the morning. And, but that gratitude journal isn't the end of it. It's just a reminder for me. So when I'm writing the gratitude journal, sometimes I sort of have to find things, but then when I begin to find them, I'm like, oh my God, there isn't anything I'm not grateful for. So it really is just a shift to put me in that perspective many more times throughout the day. It's a reminder of how powerful gratitude is. So I started that journal, I had heard about it for so long and I was like, oh God, everybody's talking about gratitude journals. And then I started and then I realized the power of it, how important it is to be grateful for just any and everything. And the journal doesn't get that repetitive. It's sort of cool. You can find something. I've gotten to the point where I can really feel gratitude even for the most difficult things. Like I feel like, oh, these difficult things are here for a reason. And I can really, I can really feel the gratitude for it. Hey, Catherine, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt because this is so amazing. I'm like soaking this all in, but I have eight minutes and 17 seconds left because I, I only have the free version of Zoom. Okay, so, so let I don't me know, just, go ahead. Let me, let me just, I'll just stop and then we'll, we can see if there's any questions and we can just have a conversation. But I'll, I'll just stop by saying, you know, overall, there's movement, which you guys are into. You know, there, that movement will do so much in keeping your energy flowing. Then there's nutrition. So it's such a, nutrition has so much more to it than just what you eat. But it's, so it's nourishing yourself in many, many different ways and using this body sensing technique of figuring out, intuiting what really gives you energy and then what shuts down your energy and really following that. And then the other thing about this is managing stress. And so everything that we're talking about will really help you manage stress in your life as well. You know, your body is a listening to your body and its response to stress. Just listening to it will give you a great sense of relief if there is anxiety that you're experiencing. And then I'll just end it by saying, you know, what really gives you energy to continue on in life is living with a kind of a purpose and appreciation and gratitude for, for everything that you've got. So including Lisa, we all have Lisa in our lives. We could just start there and be grateful for Lisa and that'll take us to a million places. <laughs> this was like seriously amazing how much you covered in this amount of time. And I just absolutely loved it. So I did record it. Um, I will only keep this within my secret group, but I, if you guys have questions, I unmuted both of you. Um, I know we have six minutes and 17 seconds, <laughs> but do you guys have any questions for Catherine? I don't have any questions per se, but I want to thank you, Kat, so much for sharing part of your evening with us. It's, it's really special, and I really appreciate everything you've said. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. It's... It's fun. I know. It's funny. Um, I think since you guys don't have questions, and I know the time is ticking, but um, at this, uh, so I've been three months without my period, and I'm like, woohoo! Okay, I'm there. And like three days before the race, literally, I was like, "What the heck?" Oh, really? Yeah, mine did that too. Three months and six months. I thought I was done, and then one more time. Yeah, yeah. So you're there. You're moving. I'm there. I'm there. I'm moving forward. I'm going to start, you know, embracing. Yeah, right. they call it the crone, you know. There's the maiden and then the mother and then the crone. And you're moving into the crone. And I embrace the crone. <laughs> okay. Well, truly, even we were, like, I've been debating for, the, for a while now about my hair. 
you know, because I, you know, I diet and, you know, your hair looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many people in my group that let their hair grow out naturally. And I loved how, what you, did you say your age flag? My age I'm flag getting flies. fired. I'm getting <laughs> fired. Next time you see me, I might be letting, I've been talking to my hairdresser about it. I, you know, it's just, I don't know. I feel like I want to just go for it. I yeah. would absolutely embrace it. Every yeah. gray hair trophy. That's right. <laughs> yep. That was awesome. I took some notes just because I was like, there were so many things that you said, um, you know, and it's interesting because I use, you know, the Dantian, we talk about it when, you know, Chi running, both of these ladies, Chi run and Chi walk, um, you know, but I never really use it in my life so much. Like I don't really think about doing that. So that was like a really, really big takeaway for me. And I love the part about being part of nature too, because I think both of these ladies also both like trail running. And I think that's one of the reasons why we like to be out there is that connection with nature. Absolutely. And I'll just say something about dro dropping into the Dantian. So I got a job as a young woman and, um, and I started doing a lot of copywriting and marketing writing and stuff. And I, I naturally, this was before I knew any of this, to figure out what I wanted to write, I would naturally drop into my gut. Mm. And I could feel it and ideas would then come up. So that in terms of writing, cause I've done, you know, I do a lot of writing, um, blogs and all kinds of stuff. So, so I drop right down into my body and into my Dantian. I didn't even know the word at that time, but I, that's where I drop down and I patiently wait and then, Mm -hmm. oh, things come up and out mm -hmm. so it is the place of creativity it's sexual energy you know that's yeah. where sexual energy is but sexual energy is so much more than that it's life force and it's really powerful yeah yeah even the whole idea of um listening to your gut i i did one of those things where my gut truly told me not to do something but i went against it and it's like, I was self-aware at that moment that I'm going against my gut <laughs> and this is probably going to come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> there it was. So it, it's, it's real. And the more you follow it, the more you have to follow it because the bigger the mistake or, or, or more comp, you know, there's like you, once you're good at it, you really have to go for it because it's so powerful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's almost unreal how powerful, like you don't realize you're like, wow, am I that, am I that powerful? We are. <laughs> we are the body. I mean, yeah. I just am so into the body is this source of wisdom. Like it is, it, it knows so much and we don't listen to it enough. Yeah. And these guys definitely hear me say it all the time, right? If there's anything I tell them when they're like, like Mel, perfect example, you, you were sick last week. Mm -hmm. you know, and her training plan had her running and she was stressing out about it. And I know that running therapy, right? We all know that that movement, like we all need it. It's part of our life, right? Well, I was like, just listen to your body. It's telling you to rest right now. Yeah. Like, and, sometimes, and it can just be a little bit of movement that it wants. Mm -hmm. So it might be telling you to move, but you get into this idea that I have to do the full thing. Well, you can go right. way down. You can just do a little bit of movement. So I love walk run for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> yep, me too. Especially for the long ones. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, it's going to close us out here. We have less than a minute. Catherine, I can't thank you enough. Like this was so awesome. Um, I'm definitely going to share it. I'll send you the clip too. So you have it in case you want to use it for anything, but it won't go out public. It's going to stay in my group. So okay. such valuable information. I so appreciate it. it was thank you so much. Yay. Love you. Nice to meet you guys. Nice meeting you as well. Have a good evening. Yeah. You too. Love bye all bye. you guys. Bye. Talk to you soon, Lisa. Thank okay, you. Okay. Bye. Bye.